Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Top Hat Chat with me, Orb, Streets and the Top Hat Gaming Man. Yeah. This week we shall be discussing the Game Boy Advance link cable and its use in conjunction with the game Nintendo GameCube. Yeah. So, guys, we've just spent an entire stream utilising this bit of hardware, and uh, what are your first impressions? It's, um, the technology is the Wii U's father. <laughs> <laughs> the Wii U's father? Yes. Uh, care to enlighten us? Yes, basically, um, you connect your um, Game Boy Advance up to the GameCube and um, use it as essentially a controller. With a screen on it, giving you extra information in the games. Mm. Right. So two screen gaming. Yeah, it's like a console DS. Yeah, the kind of how it functions, well, yeah. isn't it? So, but yeah, the Wii U, I suppose, is a console DS as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It even has a stylus, doesn't it? The Wii U. It does. It yeah. does indeed have a stylus. Yeah. Um, see, I see you've got yours because we've just been playing. Yours is connected up to a glorious um, SP. One and of the uh, things you've got yours, which is connected up to a yeah, my another... um, LGBT um, Game Boy Advance. <laughs> um, do you want to ask me where mine is? Where's, Where's yours? yours? I threw mine in the bin. Oh. Why? It's gone already. I literally bought it a week ago, and I've just thrown it in the bin after using it. Um, the, the games that seem to be able to do the most with, I actually ha got to have a go at, and it felt like I was playing an abortion simulator. Like you it never was, enjoyed. It was awful. Um, I really didn't enjoy. It. I didn't like. Maybe it was because I, we were streaming the games, um, but Four Swords Adventure we played, and it became very boring very very quickly. The, you know, the communication was cool because we had to talk to each other and stuff, but you couldn't see what was going on up there and it was flicking backwards and forwards between the two screens. I've actually got neck ache. But you have to do it on most Wii U games. I didn't, know. I didn't play a lot of Wii U either. I think that what the Wii U sometimes does is give you the option to either have it on the control pad or on the TV monitor. Not on Star Fox Zero, which is why it's awful. Uh, yeah. Well, you see, I was playing uh, earlier on today, in fact, I was playing the HD re-release of Zelda Wind Waker. And that gives you the option to press the minus button on the gamepad yeah. to either switch it between the console or the TV as its output. Um, so you can so, go for a quick poo. Yeah, like, and, play it on, well, yeah. And, and play it on the toilet. Whereas this was pretty much just toilet. So I suppose yeah. we should talk about <laughs> the games in which we actually played. Like, So we start with the first one, which you've already mentioned, was um, Zelda Four Swords Adventure, where the whole... Um, Dynamics of the game revolve around this device uh, because basically imagine it's a Zelda game but it's multiplayer instead so um, mm. all three of us could play a game a little bit like Link to the Past but at the same time cooperatively. The odd thing about it is if you walked into a cave or into a castle um, your view would then switch from the television onto uh, the Game Boy Advance. So you'd have to keep looking like this, so for streaming, obviously it didn't work. Um, but the actual game itself, I really enjoyed. I thought it was quite a unique concept. To me, it, it, it didn't feel Zelda enough. The game itself, like the typical challenges that you want with a Zelda are lots of combat. I didn't feel like there was a massive amount of combat until all of a sudden the screen was flooded with enemies and you were just like button mashing. Um, maybe we didn't play far enough into the game because apparently it's quite a large game. It seemed to but be. they didn't like the puzzles. Didn't seem particularly challenging. No, the puzzles revolved around four people standing here. That's what the, that's what the solution to almost every yeah. single puzzle was. Yeah, was stand here, four people. Um, I didn't the combat yeah. thing that you brought up just now with the whole flooding the enemies with screens. It was like you were, like, sorry, flooding the screens with enemies. I love a good fumble. <laughs> was reminiscent of like a, 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 a version of uh, Smash TV, which we actually yeah, played. Yeah, we played this the other day, yeah. The other day. You just get bombarded with enemies, or, which is not a Zelda way of doing it. But it things. kind of is, because um, Hyrule Warriors, have you played that one? Right, but that's not a main... I that's mean, I a Dynasty Warriors game with a Zelda skin. Zelda skin. 
Whereas this is trying to say this is a Zelda game. Yeah. Whereas it just didn't fit, and it had levels. If you if you went in and picked up a Link to the Past two, and it played like Warriors, you'd be pissed. Yes. <laughs> there we go. See, I think that proves the point. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it had its quirks. It had its good points. I'm not going to deny this. Um, like, um, I'm, I'm sure you can come up with one. Well, I enjoyed um, collecting lots of rupees, um, so you two couldn't get to them. Yeah. I enjoyed that. That was another thing as well. Like, I didn't feel like there needed to be a competitive aspect to the levels. Basically, part of the levels was when you get to the end you get uh, of the level, you get a score system. You get, like, rated on different things. Yeah, encouraging you to be cooperative and competitive simultaneously is a bit odd. That's very yeah, weird that's the thing. Because you did have to work together, but then it was like, okay, if I quickly jump in front of it, there was a, couple, there was a bit that was like um, a really terrible block puzzle. But is it that odd when you think about it? Because it's pretty much no different to being a car salesman or a state agent. That role is competitive yet cooperative. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, we'll bring out a car salesman simulator game and you can play that for six hours and see mm. how you get on with it. So. <laughs> Probably not very well would be I think how it I think it would go. Translates okay to those jobs but not playing a computer game. Maybe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Maybe not. I uh, mean, it was, again, it, it had maybe some more merits, like the graphical style was similar to what we are aware of. Yeah. That, is that a compliment? It's an observation more than a compliment, <laughs> I would say. So let's move on to how the next... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, another quick thing about uh, what I didn't enjoy about it. Go on. The item system in that game mm. in Zelda yeah, was really I agree. weird. I agree. You picked up uh, like Zelda staple items like the boomerang and the torch, but then you just dropped them willy-nilly to pick up the next item and you could just chop and change and there was no inventory and I know what people are saying it's like oh well you can't really have a proper inventory system if, if there's that many people going well, on the game but you fucking can you've got two screens <laughs> yeah right you think you could manage it somewhat better than how they went for it in yeah. that it just it really felt below par yeah. for a main in fact Zelda title for me. this is the perfect setup to have a decent inventory system yeah He's got an inventory screen here, haven't you? That's the thing, but it wasn't utilised in that way at all. Most of the time that you're on the screen, if not all the time that your your character is on the screen, it just says on your on on the screen of this of of the actual game board. Please look at the TV. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, what? So and, why am yeah. I using you yeah. if you're just telling me to look yeah. at the TV screen? And then when you're playing up on the screen. Right when you're sorry when you're playing the actual console like you're playing down here on the handheld, that's just the same screen that you left, and it just stays there. Yeah, it, and it, shows nothing. It was awful for that. It, it's really weird, awful. Design like it, like, I think it probably would have been better if maybe it showed you a map, like the Wii U does. Mm. Like so you could go from here, and maybe if you had the map on here when you're up on the top screen, and then when it swapped over. It then showed you a map up there, so you could see where yeah. your friends were, yeah, and stuff like that. Because there was a few times when you two would like run off, and because I was trying to watch chat, I'd lagged behind a little bit, and I was like, "I've got no idea, Rich, where are you?" And you were like, "I'm right here." <laughs> that's the least help. That that's given me no more information than what I got before I asked. Yeah, I went this way. What? <laughs> you know, and it was just it was just poor. I, I didn't enjoy it. Before we move on and talk about the next game we played using the leak cable. I just want to blow your mind a little bit. You may know this fact, but I doubt it. Are you aware that there is a link cable like this also for the Sega Dreamcast? No, I wasn't aware of that. And it actually. links the Neo Geo to the Neo Geo Pocket Color to the Dreamcast. Really? Yes. That exists? That's and that's special, exactly yeah. the same style of functionality. Maybe we should try that one time. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a Neo Geo Pocket Color up there and I've got a Dreamcast, so maybe I should get one. Maybe we should try that out. I'll just try compar the same comparison. You have to buy another Neo Geo Pocket. You have to get oh, three no, or four so of them. We're <laughs> playing Neo Geo. Yeah. So let's not do that. The next game, uh, the game that we moved on to after after we sort of had a torrid time with Zelda, mm. was uh, Final Fantasy: The Crystal Chronicles. Yes, and although we complained about the action in 
Zelda and kind of how it went. Um, it would have been nice to have had some action in Crystal Chronicles. It, it had a very, very strange system where um, maybe it was just the start of the game, I don't know, because we didn't get that far into it, but it, it literally put us off very, very quickly, was that you're tied to a very small space that didn't even cover the entire screen. Very and as soon as you stepped out of that area... You die. You die. And the way that you move the area around the map was that one of your team had to pick up an inanimate object, which then cleared the way. It's very odd and hard to explain. And it made that character slow and unable to fight or use items. So, so put it down. if this game got lackluster reviews at the time, we didn't enjoy it now either. Why on earth is it seeing a re-release on the Switch in the next few weeks? I think it's exactly Why? the same thing. I, I, I literally just think it's a... People uh, have forgotten People about enjoy it. Final Fantasy games and, you know, legacy collections and stuff like that seem to be a thing at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll just release a series of... Final Fantasy games that maybe you haven't played before or maybe you'd like to revisit but and you can all have another mad go. Is that? Crystal Chronicles is coming out on the Switch but they're not bothering with Final Fantasy 8. Yeah. 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 That's a weird one as well. Like They've overlooked some games that should definitely... Like, yeah, play. Final Fantasy 8 has got its weaknesses but it's not as bad as Crystal Chronicles. And they'll happily put 15 on there but in a massively nerfed, like, underpowered... It's basically saying... We know that our console can't quite handle the full game, so what we'll do is we'll give you like the pussy version, yes. the one that the one that we can run. You know, the soy version. Yeah, <laughs> it's just not right. In defence of Crystal Chronicles on this, it utilised the hardware better than yes. Four Swords Adventure did. A hundred percent. The action, what there was of it, was up there on the TV where it should be. And the inventory system was down on the control pad where it should be. Yeah, I feel I feel that worked a lot better. Just the game itself, probably for a self-confessed action RPG, it played very fast and loose with the idea of action. <laughs> you know? It, yeah. It, it, it yeah. and it didn't feel RPG enough to really warrant yeah. the RPG. I mean, even so, going to towards the controls as well, I didn't feel like the controls were. Qu quite what they should be. No. For example, you're playing a 3D game on a D-pad, which I think is something that one of you two pointed out very, very quickly. I think we both moaned about it. Yeah, um, but one of you pointed it out like almost immediately. You were just like, this is a 3D game and I'm using a D-pad. This is this doesn't feel right, which is the first thing. The second thing is, is that you hit the button to attack and it looked like my character was swinging a frying pan around and it was like, attack. And then it was like, so, button, hit. Button hit. It just. It wasn't like that. Hit the button. It, there was like a gap, mm -hmm. which just seemed to fill with emptiness. It didn't quite feel. It, it didn't quite feel quick. It, it, it felt slow and sluggish. Definite delay. And poorly, like almost poorly programmed. Almost. That's how it felt. So we had some lackluster experiences with both Four Swords Adventure and Crystal Chronicles. Yes. So from there. We moved on to a third title, which was WarioWare Inc. Mega Party Games. This one we had a lot of fun with. We did. Amazing um, game. Very I think fun. it's very, very hard not to enjoy WarioWare games. Mm. The one thing that I will point out is that they had a really, really good opportunity here to actually incorporate the control system. Yeah. Which they didn't do. No, it... I'm going to start by ragging on it, no. and then I think we'll bring it back. Yeah. Um, I mean, having a second screen for a WarioWare title is could be ridiculous. Oh, it happened, didn't it? There's a WarioWare games on the DS and the 3DS, so there's yeah. and the Wii U. There's lots of so multi-screen WarioWare games, but it didn't. Literally, the functionality of the link cable for this was so you can use a Game Boy Advance as a controller. Which there is no point in because we have four controller ports on the front of a GameCube to use Game Boy pads. So why do you need the extra expense at the time of having four uh, Nintendo Game Boy Advances and four Link cables so you could use these instead of your probably much more responsive and 
more comfortable to hold GameCube controllers. I would guess the only reason for it is because WarioWare is a, a huge Game Boy Advance title. Yeah. So maybe they thought people playing it would be more comfortable. They've just playing it with the same form factor. Yeah. They've just bowled it on. But uh, yeah, there isn't any use. I mean, it? looking at that, you can use controllers. Yeah. So I'm just oh, yeah. I'm just quickly double checking. You, can use you definitely, or, definitely yeah. can. Do you think it's because it's a, a party game, and they could be aware that certainly at the time that the console was released, new pads are always pretty pricey. Yeah. So did they think? We know we've sold a boatload of Nintendo uh, Nintendo Game Boy Advances. We know that loads of people will have a link cable, in theory, for other games that we've released for it where you use this as extra storage or extra things for like other games. But actually, if you've only got one or two pads, well, your mate can plug in his Game Boy Advance, which I'm sure, we're sure they have, and then we can play three player or four player. I don't know about prices mix. though. I don't know what would have actually have been more expensive. A... One of these wires or a third party controller. Just, would to, actually been more just to buy the wire, I reckon it probably would have been cheaper. But I don't know whether you could just buy the wire. I mean, actually, wait. You could just buy the you wire. You could. Because I've got a box to one up there. But yeah. it, they also came with games. Like one of the ones oh, that yeah, we true. used tonight was true. one that came with a game that you bought. So yeah. it could be, they think, well, actually. If you bought Four Swords Adventure, it came with a link cable. You might have a spare link cable sitting there that you can lend yeah. to a friend yeah. to plug in his Game Boy. That's all I can think of. And one came with Crystal Chronicles as well. And one came with Crystal Chronicles as well. So there are chances where you could have gotten. Um, I mean, there are they're the three titles that we we played. There are a boatload of others that are compatible that we didn't get to play. A lot of them unlock mini games. Yeah. So some somewhat what, some sort of DLC in a way I suppose it is unlockable content at least um, some of them unlock um, on Crash Nitro Kart mm. um, you unlock a, I think it's three extra characters oh okay that's cool um, one of them being Spyro which I didn't know wow I was really quite excited about that this is what the wiki says anyway so yeah a lot of the game, they basically a lot of the games have like amiibo style functionality yeah. when you connect. Um, um, the Game Boy Advance yeah. iteration with the game. You could right. also use them for um, like s Pokemon games, so yeah. you can swap stuff backwards and forwards. Essentially, use like a link cable, but between the GameCube Pokemon games. Do you know what it reminds me of? It's like they come out with the peripheral as a generally generally useful idea for certain games, but they were like, we need to make sure people buy it so we give them more bang for their buck. So they decided to add silly features and mini things into games to you is it and the only other thing i can think about that nintendo had previous with doing that would be the rumble pack that they released for yeah. um the n64 controller you know it was it added that 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 feedback that rumble which we all now are accustomed to in our gaming so it was, it was, but of course it was an important step but you know in like zelda it's like the agony stone where it rumbles if there's some treasure nearby. Or in another game, like I think it's Pilot Wings, it's like, it's literally nothing. It, it adds like a different part to your costume. It's like, yeah, look, you get all this extra stuff for this peripheral, you totally want to buy it, right? And you get suckered into buying it, and you're like, oh. This, uh, this is what it does. Yeah. This is, the Amiibos is the modern, is the modern equivalent of it. You're just like, oh, so it's not that useful. I'm not <laughs> sure why it's I quite, bought Yeah, this. yeah, I... I can see that it's it's frustrating because I was really excited mm. I didn't realise how poor the application would be um, so yeah mine is going to go in the bin I was gone in the bin it hasn't name. actually gone in the bin that was me having a go mine's here <laughs> but it will go in the bin um, I can't see myself ever ever using this and I paid 15 quid for this on eBay if you don't want it I'll have it tomorrow at 4 no I prefer to throw it away <laughs> Rather than contribute. Yeah. Um, so I'm, re I'm really not happy about it, to be honest. Um, but thank you for the person that donated the extra one. Yes. Um, I had to buy one myself. You had one floating around. You bought one. I bought, I bought yeah. Um, and now it's... Done. It's done. We're never, probably never ever going to use this again. We've got four now. How did we get four in such a short time? In a week? You had one. You bought one. I bought one. And one was donated. Okay, yeah, you're an yeah, expert yeah. procurer. Yeah, I that's thought. ridiculous. You thought I was getting four in a week. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, on that rather 
you Dis- know, yeah. disappointing bombshell. I think that's probably it for our discussion on uh, the GameCube the, the Game Link, Link cable. cable with the Game Boy Advance. I uh, must say that there is one more thing actually that I really want to point out. Right, I bought mine second hand. Mm. Okay, uh, and I know that the one that you're using mm-hmm. is also a second hand one. Yeah. Right, and this one is a brand new, fresh out of the box one. Ah. Have a little look at that. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely zero wear, zero discoloration. That's a second hand one as well. It's some slight wear, but not much at all. Look at that, right? These two. Is Is there any wear on that? There's no wear on that. You're being very picky. Yeah. Right? And now look at this one. That's a brand spanking new one out of the box. Here's the other. That, do you know what funny other funny They've thing about They've clearly them? had no use. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> do you know what else is funny about that though? The only person who had any issues connectivity wise with their link cable during our stream this evening was the one with the brand new link cable. Was it a brand new link cable? Because it was out of the box up there, the Zelda box. Well, and it was, it was all in the, in the packaging. And do you know the twist ties? You can never put those back how they put one in the factory, and that was... So that spanking. was the first time it ever been used, yes. you think, ever? That's yes. crazy. And it cut out... It <laughs> reset, six times. It reset your Game Boy at least a dozen times. Yeah. Which is mad. Yeah. So, anyway. We should call it a day, really. Are you going to outro this one again? Yes, I will. Yeah, so, fine. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this extremely exciting, absolutely riveting edition of Top Hat Chat. Let us know about some of your experiences in which you have enjoyed with the Game Boy um, Advance Game to GameCube Cube, Cube. linked cable. Um, let's hear about some of your stories. Do you enjoy this product or are you um, underwhelmed? Um, like I said, I wouldn't say I'm really underwhelmed. I'd say I'm more whelmed than anything else. Just whelmed. I think that's very kind. <laughs> Not overwhelmed, underwhelmed, whelmed. Hmm. <laughs> Support us on Patreon as well. Cheerio! Top Hat Chat is partly funded by the fantastic support we receive on Patreon. So I would like to give thanks to the following people. Michael Keneally and Ben Sainty. Both for supporting the Top Hat Trust. And all of our other patrons. Yeah! Also, a huge thank you to our god-tier patron, Stuart McDermott. We salute you, sir. So if anybody else wants to support our fantastic Patreon, then there is a link for you in the description. Ta-ta and farewell.